Here's a simple way to build a screencast using a tool that you probably already have, PowerPoint or Keynote. Um, this method is really useful for tutorials, that is when you're primarily giving a set of instructions, telling your learners how to do something. So the first step is to build the slideshow. As you can see on the left, I have about 11 slides, and that's going to be the basis of my screencast. PowerPoint and Keynote both have a recording option. Um, I'm not using that here. I'm using Apple's QuickTime, which lets me capture anything on screen. And uh, so I'm going to capture this slideshow. Very, very basic. Today we're going to learn about how to use Anvil's voice board tool. And the first step is for a teacher to send students a link with uh, the lesson where the voice board is contained. Um, and you know what you can see here in the middle is a sample email of an invitation where your teacher has invited you to view the name of a lesson and students click on this link and that takes them to the lesson. Well, actually it takes them to the login screen and they can log in with several different ways, Google, Facebook, or if they're University of Oregon students, they can use their Duck ID. That's what the Google login looks like. Very, should be very familiar to students. So let's talk about the voice board itself. In Anvil, a lesson can have several different activity types, so more than just voice boards, but that's what we're gonna focus on today. Notice that the voice board can, can have more than just voice. So this particular one has an audio recording and an image attached. You can also upload documents. You can do video instead of audio. And of course, add many different kinds of pictures. This is what a completed message looks like. So this one actually has an audio an image and some text describing what the what the what the recording is about and i encourage you to ask your students to always tell you what the recording is about it makes it a lot easier to skim um, let's see how you create one of these there are basically four steps um, you add a message you write down what it's about you click on plus to begin the recording process or to upload the video. And lastly, you click on send to submit the message. And uh, that's all there is to it. It can be done very, very quickly if you know what you're going to say. Let's break that down a little bit. So after clicking on that add message button here, I get, the plate, I get a space to write down what I'm going to talk about. And from there, I have a choice of three ways of adding media. I can put up a YouTube link, I can do an audio or a video recording right inside the voice board, or if I've already got something recorded, say on my phone, I can upload it. Let's look at an audio recording. So to get to the audio recording, I clicked on the image of the camera to switch from video to audio. Um, for most purposes, most cases, audio is more than adequate for this kind of practice. Um, when I'm ready to start recording, I click on the Begin Recording button down here. It pauses for a few seconds, and then I start speaking. And I can I always encourage students to try to speak extemporaneously, that is, from notes um, or memory rather than just reading. It makes it much more interesting to listen to and, of course, is more uh, close to what uh, we hope they'll hear and what they'll say. If they like that, if they like what they hear after playing it back, they click on Looks Good and we're almost done. The last step is to click on Send to submit the recording. At any time, they can go back in and edit it. For example, if you want to add a photo or some text or another photo, you can click on Add Media and that lets you change it. To edit any part of the message, just click on the pencil icon. That's it. 
voice boards are easy for teachers to make and a great way to encourage students to practice speaking outside of class.